today we have today we have uh, Picha um, uh, talking to us about how good design is um, uh, good marketing, um, and and the format of this session is a little different from the ones that we've um, that that all of you guys have been seeing before, uh, which is where we we've, we've been having speakers deliver a presentation. Over here, we are looking to have more of a conversation. Um, and, and so there's no flow as such. I have written down some of the questions that I have. And if you have questions at any point of time, just please feel free to write, write those down into Q&A and I'll take those up as and when they come. Um, to give you a little bit of context, um, Picha has, uh, she's, she's a maverick at, at Cloudways. Um, Cloudways is a managed cloud hosting provider. Um, they take the hassle away from um, you having to, so you create great and beautiful websites and they'll make sure that that it's up uh, is that is that yeah. the correct um, uh, I would say that in a nutshell that's what it is uh, I am a designer I'm not uh, I mean I understand a little bit of de developing of course uh, but I definitely don't know very much about servers mm -hmm. and Cloudways made it possible for me to have to have a digital ocean or Velta ser server wherever in the world with zero hassle, because I tried to do that by myself and I was like, ah, I can't do it. But basically Cloudways uh, built the platform for, for me to make it possible for me. And yeah. it, if you if you come from instance, for instance, from cPanel, oh my God, it's so much easier, yeah. so much easier. It's a pleasure to look after websites now. It's just so easy. Yeah, yeah. And, and and so in a way, in a way, uh, you know, the the uh, in a way, the value that that I think Cloudways also uh, looks to offer, and, and and we also look to offer is is basically helping um, you know folks who are who are making websites or or running agencies, um, who are the people actually uh, most more often than not doing websites, just have peace of mind and and have you yeah. um, you know generate the most impact where your capabilities are. And, and and that's what uh, we do as Ma 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 Mavericks. There's three of us for now. It's yeah. it's uh, myself, Pichaneri, and my colleagues, Lee Jackson and Jan Koch. And we we all have our own speciality. But what we do is really is we we create content. We do webinars and and we create other types of content, yeah. all aimed at helping people build a better web. Really, in a nutshell, that's that's yeah. kind of what we do. I think. We haven't yeah. come up with a proper definition, but it's kind of what, what we do. Yeah. So it's a really, really genuine desire from Cloudways yeah. to, to do to do all this. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and to so help. for folks to who, help. who may not know, um, you know, Lee Matthew Jackson, he was the session opener for us. And um, he he spoke at length uh, about um, about how can you go about positioning your agency and how can you stand out from the crowd. And, and he dealt with the yeah. problem that most of us face in the sense that that you know specifically for us when we when we started off um, we had 1200 other it agency um, agencies in in three mile radius of our office right and and so um, and so how do you how incredible do you yeah three mile radius three mile radius 12 that is as astonishing yeah yeah absolutely uh, and and wow. this, and this is not even, um, and, and so this is, uh, so the city that we are in, which is, which is Ahmedabad, it's a, it's a second yeah. tier city, right? So, so if you go yeah. to, if you go to Mumbai, if you go to Bangalore, there's, there's even much higher concentration, right? So, um, so, so yeah. And, and, um, and, 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 and so he has, he has, he shared with us the approach that, that we, all of us could, could implement to, to find that, that particular positioning uh, that, that could help us close more clients. So that's, um, so that's that's a little bit uh, bit about um, about Lee and the other thing that I would also like to uh, uh, just kind of add before we jump into the session uh, there are two quick things so one was um, the first session that we had today by by Deepak Shukla uh, from from Pearl Lemon he he spoke about um, he spoke about how uh, your pre sales should be um, whether it is whether it is it, it looks great or not is a different matter altogether. But how your pre-sales should be memorable, right? And and that's that that was that was the so you spoke about pre-sales, sales, and and post closure. Um, how should you deal? But but the the key point in, in the pre-sales bit was was what are the steps that you could take to make it memorable? And 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 one of the key things in making um, your your pre-sales memorable or everything that you do memorable is is having um, good design and, and that's I think what we're going to talk about today the other yeah. thing that I wanted to bring up was 
uh, was that LinkedIn profile of Picha is is linked on summit.clientjoy.io, and if you if you head over there, you can connect with her after the session, and she offers a free um, strategic call. You can book her on Calendly, and and she'll be right with you. Right. So so that's another value add that you get um, if you have very specific list of questions that you want to um, talk to her about. Right. So with that with that background in in that context, uh, Picha, finally yes, uh, we are we are. <laughs> Um, so, so let me start with this. Uh, how do you define good design? Right? So, what are the key characteristics? So, this is a very good question because to me, the whole point is that to me, design is planning. A lot of people think that design is the styling, and to me, that's not it uh -huh. at all. In fact, these days, I use the term design because it's what people seem to understand better, but really it's user experience as a whole is mm -hmm. what we need to think about because good design is really everything. In fact, the title of the original uh, presentation that I gave at Lee's event last year, uh, Lee has an event called Agency Transformation Live, yeah. uh, which is, you know, talks about things that are very similar to what this summit is about. So it was good design is good marketing, but then as the slides go on, it, and it says, and it's good UX, and it's good absolutely everything because uh, all the, all the, in fact, all the, uh, for branding and marketing and design and UX, a lot of the techniques to get to the result totally overlap. So what your, to go back to your original question, which was what, what's good design? Good design is something, good design needs to be useful. Good design needs to solve a problem. And good design needs to be about the user, not about you. And in terms of those of us who work with clients, businesses that you are building a product for, very often, that's the difficult bit. It's actually making the client understand that they don't need to like it. It's yeah. not about what they like or not like. It's about, is it good for your user? Does it solve the problem that the user has when they visit your website or open your app? Yeah. And one of the many, 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 many reasons why this is essential as a starting point, as a sort of mentality shift, is that when they say, oh, can you make the logo bigger or can that button be red? You can say, well, no, and this is why. And you can give them really, 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 really solid reasons. But it's really amazing how when you go deeper into it, you actually see that all the good reasons overlap. Or if you want to do good marketing, it's going to apply to your design. It's going to apply to your user experience. It's going to apply to absolutely everything. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry, absolutely. Um, this this brings me to to two key things or, or examples that I wanted to also also talk about. And 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 so one of the things that happens is is as an agency, um, uh, and we've we've done this this mistake as well. And, and the thing that I I loved about about Cloudway's website also, which is uh, something that I went through when I was uh, when I first spoke with Lee, um, um, and and they do it really well. Is 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 that the website does not talk about themselves right so the website talks about what do you get if you work with cloudgate so so a lot of agencies will say uh, you know hey you know we we do python development and we do dot net development and and, and we do means um, nothing SEO. to the user exactly it it does not yeah. mean anything so do not show your your features you you want to show yeah. the benefit that the that your client is going to have uh, more often than not, the benefit is is peace of mind or savings in terms of time or savings in terms of cost. I mean, these are the top three benefits that most yeah. agencies could could potentially offer in diff different ways of of getting there. So that was the first thing. Um, and then the second example that I that I've come across is and 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 folks who are listening from India might know there used to be a company called called Free Charge, which which then later got acquired by by Snapdeal and. and um, and and I was I was talking to uh, to his founders, it was a multi million dollar exit, right? So I think two hundred million dollar plus um, exit, one of the largest that has happened in India. Um, and so I was talking to the founder uh, some time back, and one of the things that he said, um, and which which really um, dif which really kind of drew the line of of differentiation between good design and and good experience. Um, and and so so he said that hey, you know, our application allows our users to pay the bills. Um, no, I want our users to be able to pay the bill in three clicks or three taps or less. 
And so I don't want to have elaborate screens and amazing graphics and you know model pop-ups and and things like that. That's not that good to, design. Yeah, and yeah. I want them to come in and get out of my app in 10 seconds. And that's a metric that we measure. Are our users able to come in, select what they want to pay for and pay for it and get out of it as quickly as so, so in, in an age where, where folks and where products are obsessed with in-app engagement and keeping users within their applications for longer period of time, he was actually counterintuitively thinking that I want to get them out because, because for them and their use case, that's what meant good experience. But that's exactly the definition of good design yeah. because it's the experience has to be good for the user first and foremost. And that founder has got it. And I'm not surprised that they built such a, a, a lucrative and effective platform because that is exactly what should be driving you. And that's what often gets lost. And, and that's why I think understanding that design is not styling and in fact styling comes at the end and i'm not saying that it's not important because i bet i've never seen the app that you talk about but yeah. i bet that actually they spent a lot of time making it look as simple as possible mm -hmm. because achieving that degree of simplicity in the interface by means of which in three clicks you're out yeah. That's what, That's you know, and of course it, the user interface needs to be perfectly usable, which means that it needs to be accessible. It needs to be visible by everyone. It needs to be incredibly clear. And that's where the, the aesthetics of it go into, but yeah. that doesn't mean that. So it doesn't mean that it's going to be ugly because in fact, studies prove th that uh, something that is perceived as good looking and as pretty is found more usable as well. There's yeah. a study, it, it was done on, um, uh, it was, um, it was ATMs. Uh, so cash machines mm -hmm. in uh, Japan and they built an extremely ugly one that was really just looked ugly. Uh, the functions were uh, placed in exactly the same way. It wasn't, that didn't change at all. The, the actual flow of the actions was exactly the same. But the every single user or, or something like that, just I don't have the actual figures right here and now, but uh, the an overwhelming majority of the users said that the, the interface of the, of the ugly machine, so there was a pretty machine and an ugly machine, and the ugly machine everybody found more difficult to use, even though the functions were exactly the same and the flow was exactly the same. Right. And so and, good, and, uh, uh, might be that, that you know, uh, good styling and... and, and um, and you know, good kind of placement of elements is a is a is a necessary function for good design, uh, but may not be sufficient one, right? So, so you've got to yes. have that necessarily, but but there are other things that you've got to take into account that would make absolutely. It and you have to have a good product as well. I mean, it, it has to be worth it. And there are countless examples of this, really. But I think that the one thing that always comes out very very evident is that something that is only pretty would not necessarily win and i mean i have got visual examples as well if if you want to to go into this quite yeah, absolutely so, so that was actually my my next question so if you could yeah you could share a couple of examples uh for for us i think that would be that would be great are you able to share your screen yeah okay Okay, uh, it just tells me, Zoom is telling me, host disabled attendee screen, screen sharing. So oh, it's not okay. allowing me to share. <laughs> just one sec, let me, let me do that. Uh, it used to be over here. Okay. Maybe make me a panelist, perhaps? You oh, are. Mark. Or a panelist, just one second. Oh, so that's strange. I'll I'll make you host, and I think you should then be able to do it. Yeah. Are you able to do it now? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So where is it? There you go. Right. So if you see this bridge, what yeah. do you think? What's your immediate reaction when you see this bridge? It it, it does look beautiful. It's beautiful, isn't it? It looks yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's it's extremely impressive. But guess what? It's totally not usable it's in venice so first of all as you can see it wasn't really needed at this point because there are quite a few other bridges there and then uh it's in glass 
Venice is a city in northern Italy where it gets very cold in the winter, and I'm talking like seriously cold. So this bridge is iced over. It's practically yeah. impassable in the winter. Also, the city of Venice, the bridges have very specific guidelines uh, as regards height of steps, especially at the base, because you need to be able to get, get, over, get over them with your... Um, carry a uh, uh, wheeled uh, shopping bag, basically, which residents need to carry. And I, and it's impossible. A wheelchair can't, can't get over it. A buggy can't get over it. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, there are so many reasons why. So the, the city of Venice, the city council, was sued over 5,000 times at the last time I checked, which was over a year ago by citizens who fell over, got hurt, or in some other way yeah. uh, got damaged by this bridge. So this gets 10 out of 10 in terms of looks, for sure. Yeah. It's it's a it's a, a Spanish architect of, of, or, of origin called Calatrava. And uh, I can give you so many examples so of all his works. They look absolutely stunning, and they're yeah. completely not usable. Yeah. So... You, you know, it, this didn't take into account the user's need at all, yeah. not at all. And this is what happens. Then the city, it costs, obviously it costs them a lot of money to build, but yeah. also it will cost a lot, a lot of money to the city in terms of lawsuits and lawyers, because it also breaks every single rules that the city themselves set. And this is what you do, for instance, when you build an and not accessible website when you don't think, okay, the first thing here is for people with disabilities to be able to use this website. And actually, I have an example of a website uh, by an artist that I absolutely love that is pretty much like that. I'm just going to reload it. It's, sure. it. So this is how it starts. And already, you know, it's enough to give anybody an epileptic fit. And it's just, so I'm not even doing anything. I'm not doing anything. It just jumps around all the time. And the tool tip keeps changing and things keep happening and all i want is, is let's say that i'm a fan out to just find out the day i can't remember the year in which a certain record was was produced and yeah. it's so difficult to find out it's so so for instance here I, then i noticed that this about here and i can't quite get on it but if i go uh, and then anyway, just to, you know, cutting a long story short, it doesn't help me because they want to create an immersive experience and actually looks extremely beautiful because the typography here is amazing. So finally, I've found the, the discography, but the tooltip like this is so unusable. So it looks amazing, but ultimately it doesn't help me. And then again, even though I think here that I'm going to the discography, but all these things are going on. And 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 now look, it's just, it's completely overwhelming. So even though yeah. it is very, very, very beautiful, there is no doubt about that, but it hasn't helped me very much. So, and I bet that if you were to look at the actual, I'm not an accessibility expert. I always design with, Accessibility first and foremost in my mind, but uh, even though I'm not an accessibility expert, I can tell you that this is definitely, you know, for many reasons, not uh, an accessible website. I am going, it's actually driving me crazy. I can't use my mouse for anything else now. I literally can't use my mouse for anything else. Okay. I'm, okay. Now I can stop the share. I was, I was not, it was making it impossible for me to, to do. Uh, to do anything else. So uh, that's an example. So that the, the online version of that bridge is that website. And again, I love prints. And I also hats off to the designers because they did create something that is astonishing, but it's fundamentally not usable. And that's when you give cr creativity and your own creativity the precedence over the actual needs of the user because I haven't been able to find out what, what I wanted. It probably doesn't work in a lot of, you know, depending on your system and so on. So that's, that's one of the many examples that I could give. And I want to give you, though, an example of something that uh, looks great and is totally use, usable and that is absolutely uh, empathic with the needs of the user. I'll go, I'm going to share again. Yeah. Uh, where's my, 
if that's all right. Okay. Uh, where is it? It's here. Share. Keynote. There you go. Okay. So this is a hospital in Spain. It's just such a lovely story. It makes me kind of cry every time. So they, they're a children's hospital and they had this big problem because the kids were terrified of going to the operating theater. I mean, who wouldn't be? I would be. Yeah. And it, also, but if you're a child, even more, because you don't know quite, you know, if you're an adult, at least you were a bit more aware. And um, so what they came up with is the idea of, of toy cars to for the kids to go to the operating uh, theater in. Yeah. And can you imagine? So the, it, so it, it responds to the three needs. So it, it, it looks great because it does look brilliant. Yeah, It's perfectly usable for the users. It accomplishes the need because these kids need to be taken to somehow to the operating theater and they can, they do get there. Look at the pink one. I mean, it's just so sweet and yeah. they're not terrified anymore. You know, they, they go there and they, they, you know, they've had a really nice experience. So something that was, was terrifying before is turned into something that, that uh, is even pleasant and you take it takes the mind away and it w helps uh the doctors and the nurses because instead of having a hysterical child on their hands they have a you know a child that's relaxed enough and that's having who's having fun yeah. and again so this is the kind of level of empathy that you need to have with your users because they are helped and so are you you the doctor you the nurse now don't have a problem anymore and your user doesn't have the problem either it's also That's... Problem for the doctors and for the kid and and for the parents all of them at, at once and absolutely yeah, it's a brilliant thing yeah and it looks great as well so you see that you know that that's uh that's what good design looks like Basically, so there is definitely, I mean, even in and of itself, the return on, on investment on the amount of time that you save and the amount of stress that you save, yeah. that speaks for itself. I mean, I don't have the numbers for this hospital, but I'm sure that it's quite clear how, how that is great results, you know, all around. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so that, that actually, uh, so, so good that, that you, you mentioned numbers, right? Because one of the mm -hmm. things that happens is is whenever we start whenever anyone starts talking about you know having good design more often than not it's it's expensive and and so so the the tech department or or the executive department or the finance department will come back and say hey you know can you show me an roi on this on this investment that we are making right um and and so so how do you how do you actually go ahead and, and measure roi uh, on, uh, on 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 good design so there are so many examples of this. I'll give you a very quick, very recent example. Very simple. It's one of us. This is uh, Young Cox's uh, WP Ag Agency Summit. Young Cox is, is our co one of our colleagues at uh, Cloudways. This was the original homepage of his um, online event mm -hmm. uh, in December. And we did this every uh, second Tuesday of the month, we do a UX and UI and speed and tech review of a few websites as part of the Cloudways Mavericks uh, program. Uh, so, in this case, in this case, we looked at at uh, the the WP Agency Summit website, and I gave I gave Jan a few tips, a few uh, pieces of advice on how to change this landing page because I felt there were there were a few things. This was the original one. So I said uh, that you need to lead the eye because if you can see the alignment of this page goes all over the place. You're not leading the eye. There's just some sort of jumping. It's quite hard to identify what the main message is. Correct. So he worked on that. He changed the alignment, alignment. He changed the size of things. He made much clearer what the call to action was. There was, for instance, there's there was a problem in um, consistency because up here it says, get your free pass. And here it says register now for free. It's like, is that the same thing or not? There was a contrast problem because the, uh, the words on the button are not very clear. So he changed all that. He changed because that's also design, deciding on what your copy is like is part of design because you design with content really. So 
Uh, he changed all, all that. You know, there were many things. I'm not going to go into it because otherwise we will spend an hour on it. But he implemented not even all of the advice, most of the advice. And what happened is that he saw 400% increase in conversions okay. overnight. He literally, we did this in the uh, evening. It was mm -hmm. around 6 p.m., I think, in, in Europe. And next morning he woke up to 400% increasing wow. conversions i mean it's just it and, and i was like what that's nice and he was like yeah that is i'm gonna that is nice i'm gonna listen to you now you know i'm gonna think about the design first and i was like great you know i'm so pleased that that shows you but then there are so many other examples and I, i'll give you a few a few uh, uh really big ones and mm -hmm. it there really is a compelling business case for good because i you know we, we we're saying design i now like i said i talk more about user experience but it's Part, part and parcel of the same because yeah. design is planning so the re how you get to these results is by researching and planning that's 60 percent of the job before you even get to the design part so airbnb we all know airbnb they basically started because they were two people in san francisco who uh, what was the story they because san francisco there's lots of of um uh, so both brian and, and I, I'm, I'm forgetting the name of the other founder but both of them wanted to attend uh, attend a particular event and uh, they were not able to find uh, they were not That's able the to find a hotel room um and so so they they just went to a friend's house uh, had a bed uh, a kind yeah. of an air bed um, Airbed, that's why, because that, yeah, that's why it's Airbnb. Yes, exactly. They had an, they had an airbed, uh, had breakfast in the morning, went to the event, and then came up with the idea of why don't we have airbed and breakfast? And so that's exactly that's the idea. Yeah. But what they used to do, so this is as far back as I could go on, on the Wayback Machine and so on, and it's kind of what it looks like. I think this was. Uh, I have my notes somewhere else. It's 2009. Yeah, this is kind of around 2009. And the main yeah. problem with it was, look at the photos. I mean, look at those photos. They're yeah. dark. They're horrible. They're like skew. And um, so they got to a point where it, they were not growing. Around 2011, they weren't really growing. And they were especially concerned by total lack of growth in New York specifically because they thought that in New York it would be it would be like really big and they so they went on the ground they went to New York they spoke to hosts and guests and they realized that the problem was the bad photos because these were people you know in, in we didn't the mobiles now the ones especially with a wide angle camera can take yeah. pretty much pretty good photos but not at the time and people weren't using them as much so they were really rubbish photos and and so guests were put off uh because you know it just it didn't inspire confidence so this tells you that yes beauty does matter because it inspires confidence there's plenty of studies on on this and uh, uh and also it tells you that that uh, you need to speak to people to find out what the problem really is because otherwise they could have simply spent thought okay well let's do more let's buy spend more money on google ads do you know what I mean? But they found what the real problem was. And usually it's one problem that, in, that affects absolutely everything else. And that was the one problem. That's a kind of basic principle of good design and good user experience. Find the one problem that will solve all other problems. And in this case, it was the photos. So they went to New York again. They bought proper photographic equipment. They hired photographers and they started taking proper photos. Yeah. So at the time, in, in and this was around uh, 2011 when this happened, 2010-11. This is this, this had been their growth from 2008 to that point between 2010, 2010 and 2011. That's how they grew. That was the astronomical growth. And I know because I was uh, in London. I lived in London for almost 20 years until 2016. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was in London and um it was around 2011 and i most of my friends were we were like going, yeah hell yeah we want to do this we would hire out the spare room which had a, not a positive effect on our neighborhoods but that's a different story and they sent a photographer around and yeah. the the side effect of the photographer was that the photographer actually checked also that i was i was renting out a flat that corresponded to the description so it was also quality quality check really 
and yeah. um, and uh, and I thought it was great because they so solved the problem for me. And uh, so you know, there you go. The, you know, here we are today. I mean, I don't know how they're doing now in COVID times, but this is this is what the results are now. I mean, if you think of the difference, it's quite staggering, isn't it? I mean, where would you stay? Rather, what would you rather stay? You know, it's just it's it's. Um, it's really interesting, but however, it's also true that they, that Airbnb, did have a product that their audience really wanted. It was, yeah. it was a very, very good product anyway. The idea was excellent. Whether you know it's still true to the origins is a different story. But I want to show you just another one because yeah. I think you know I know more or less the questions that you want to ask me, and they all go in the same in this kind of direction. Now I want to ask our audience, whether they know, if, if someone knows, let's find, do you know whose logo this is? I don't know the logo. I, I, I know that this is Isaac Newton. Uh, yeah, it is. But I think one of the, one of the, one of the attendees yeah, has so, replied saying Apple. Yeah, they, they, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they have the answer. So not everybody does know. I mean, often in my talks, people oh. don't know, but yes, it is Apple. But oh. why? Because then an Apple is going to fall on his head. Apple computer. Now, let's. This was the very, very first Apple logo. I think more or less the very first. Well, since they were called Apple, and uh, imagine it on the front of a of an Apple store. Now, I mean, does that work? Tell me, is is it? Because also imagine it like tiny, tiny as a. Can you? You can't even see it. But I think that. I mean, this is hilarious. Would Apple be what they are now if they still had this logo? I really, I, I, I honestly don't think so. And in fact, they're. It, the, you know, the, the, this is what actually, sorry, I, I went too fast. This was a following logo, which yeah. basically hasn't changed very much since. It was rainbow at this time, and then it changed, you know, it had gradients, it had various things. But basically, it's just the absolutely simplest logo that you could imagine. And they, uh, their big pivot, Apple's really, real pivot, I'm going to show you a few, what well, this is what it looks like now. Uh, yeah. But I, I am a long, long, long-term Apple user. I mean, to the point where we've gone almost first full circle and I'm not, I'm not really their target audience anymore. But yeah. this is what we used to get excited about. I mean, this was a 90s Apple PC that I, they were called Apple PC. It was a power Macintosh and I absolutely loved it. And, but I mean, does it look, doesn't, it didn't look any different from a normal PC. What yeah. got me excited was that at the time I was uh, was uh, doing book design and I was doing photography and I had to deal with huge files and this gave me that the power of this machine was unparalleled. So I didn't care what it looked like. My loyalty was based on on other reasons. And then they did this. Yeah. And they did this. When they did this, I was like, oh my god, this was. This was like my handbag. I had an orange one, like orange one like this. This is actually at the top. It's a handle. I could carry it like a handle. And I went, oh, it, this was extraordinary. And it was a tiny machine, but it was super powerful. And also technically it was groundbreaking because it was the first Wi-Fi machine. This, I didn't need to plug it in. And it was amazing. So it completely responded to brief. It was, it, it, it was beautiful, which heightened my brand loyalty no end but it was also incredibly innovative so what do you think guys do you get return on investment do you or what i mean that's when apple pivoted they don norman was there and it was the uh, uh i think don norman was uh when whether don norman is kind of for those who don't know he's sort of the granddaddy of user experience and pre he pretty much invented it as it is now by working at apple Okay. In the 90s, he created the department uh, and uh, and uh, they started thinking about the end user. And that's when the Apple uh, dream started, you know, the, the legend started happening because I was theirs already. I didn't care. I mean, they had me way before this. My first Apple computer was 1993 and the ease of the... Um, of the operating system was just, there was no comparison with Windows. We just, we used to laugh at Windows. Now they're not much different. Uh, and also Apple have gone in, in a different direction now for me. But however, this is, does it, does it work or not? Do, do you tell me? This is the, yeah. the one example to end them all, but you also have the like micro, this is a macro example. 
Yeah. But you also have the micro example with Young Cox's website that just by designing it, because he hadn't designed it, he just plonked yeah. stuff on the homepage. And I also made him greatly reduce the big chunk of text that he had there. And it, you know, 400% return on investment. So you can get micro examples and, and macro examples. You can get both. And they all tell you that the return on investment is huge. I do have a few more figures. Sure. Uh, uh, let me just, uh, far, ooh, he's playing with me. <laughs> Otherwise, we can just go through the slides because it all goes a, a little bit slower. So this is not this is uh, things that I found that every every dollar invested in UX stroke design results in a return between two dollars and one hundred. Okay. Uh, so that's one. Uh, but you can get I mean documented that uh, as much by as much as four hundred percent here intentional and strategic user experience. Sorry if it goes a bit wonky, but it's all slowed down when it we're with, with Zoom. So yeah. it's a quality measure as well, because when you get it wrong, uh, you know, it can wreck your uh, reputation. And I, show, I showed you the bridge earlier, which yeah. is, you know, a good example. Then I, I have a few more. Another thing that it does is that it, when I talk about UX and design, what I'm, as I said earlier briefly, it's all about the research that you do beforehand. So if you do a lot of research beforehand and you find your users' needs and you find what their problem really is, that means that you are going to avoid really costly mistakes at the end. Think about if you only find out later when a product is developed, it costs much more to fix the problems. I'm sure yeah. that everybody you know, can see that. That that defines first two years of our existence. <laughs> I mean, we are we are about seven years in, um, but 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 that defines first two years of our existence, right? Where um, where we did not give enough importance to good design. We were we were like you know let's have more features. I mean more features is the answer, right? And and you build and build and build. Um, you built a library and, and then you've got integrations and then you've got so many things. But you're not onboarding the users correctly. They don't have the necessary information over there. And so then you go back, rebrand the whole product, and then start from scratch. And which is much more expensive than, than had you spent about a month more and a couple of people, you know, putting their brains together, coming up with better design. So that's that's absolutely correct. And also it's that's the thing. That the, to me, the, the majority of the design phase goes into the research. So mm. it's it, it really, I, and it should be 60%. And, and then you carry on researching because obviously then you, when you, mm, you, you research, then you design and then you test. And when you test, that's also research. And then when you, when you also do, uh, you know, your analytics, your Google analytics, your uh, uh, AB testing, that's also part of research as well. And, um, it, it's usability is is a, a problem. Set, what do I mean by usability? Is am I able to quickly? Is what your um, uh, the uh, bill paying app that yeah. you're talking about? Mm -hmm. The three clicks. That's usability, and anybody must be able to use it without a having a, a an instruction booklet. You know, which is kind of now a little bit of the pitfall of, of Apple because if I don't read on about it, I don't, there's so many hidden features and things that I don't know. And now they care way too much about the aesthetics of things and not about the things that matter. You know, six months into my iPhone, the battery is gone. You know, it's things like that. And so I'm not, you know, Apple is a fantastic story, but it doesn't, what I say about it now doesn't necessarily mean that they're still perfect because to me, they have pretty much abandoned the core of or the substance of it. They don't really think about the, their users as much as they used to, but still they are such an amazing story in so many ways. And also what Steve Jobs used to say, which is just take away from design. I can't remember the exact quote, but he says something like, you know, design something, then take away what doesn't, what is not useful, then take more away and more away and more away, take away as much as possible. If you think at the, um, if you think about the iPod, I mean, it barely had anything on it. Yeah, just you one, know, yeah, one button. And it was the most usable thing ever. And in fact, I used to love it because 
I could use it as a, an external hard drive as well, because when I plugged it into my computer, my computer would see it. And now that doesn't happen anymore. And that's such a usability fail, because if I want to transfer files from my uh, laptop to my iPad, I don't care how many of you say or oh, use AirDrop. And then where is it? Where is it in AirDrop? I, can't, I can never find it. Where's, is it in the downloads? It, uh, AirDrop doesn't always use. What I used to be able to do with my iPod, I would plug it in. I had it there as a hard drive, could plunk anything into it. Easy peasy. Now it's not, it, now it's, I remember the first iPad that I got, I was like, how do I, sorry, where is it? Why can't I see it? How do I put things into it? How do I transfer my files? And people are like, oh, no, you can't transfer files. You need to use an app as a bridge. And I was like, why I didn't anybody tell me? How is it possible that Apple has built something that makes my life more difficult instead of easier? Yeah. So I think that that was a big they pivoted. Anyway, don't let me talk about Apple too much. <laughs> a very important return of investment because of um, is too. Sorry, I, we went on with the slide. And I was talking about Apple competition because if you do enough research, you will know what the competitors are doing, and you will know how to create that differentiation that you were talking about. Yeah. And there's no point building something that isn't needed or that wouldn't work. And I'm sure that you experienced that as well i definitely have experienced it in products that i built and then i was like no it's not maybe the product would work but the clients don't understand that it that it's good for them so there's no point me building it basically Absolutely. that's 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 spot on so i think um so i think Misha, we're we're uh, towards the end of the uh, of the session would it be would it be possible for you to to um, hand over the the host rights to me the what sorry the the host rights. So, so just go into part, go into participants, um, and and just click on uh, click on panelists um, and hover over my name, and then it should just give me one second. Let me just try to do it myself. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm the host now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Done. Oh, that that was a good experience. Ah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Zoom gave you a good experience. Brilliant. Yeah. They had to step up, didn't they? Because we recently they've become like essential to everybody's life which yes. yeah 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 okay. yeah i think i can stop the share now possibly yeah um so awesome so so i think thank you thank you Peter, for for um taking the time out uh, today and talking to us about how good design in terms of so what is good design so just to sum it up i think um there are there are three key things that we that we spoke about today one is is that um, you know, good design is just not does not just mean that making it pretty. It it sh should be more functional and usable as well. Um, and and we looked at a couple of examples of that. Uh, while while the pretty part um, is is a is a necessary function, but it is definitely not a sufficient one. Right? Absolutely. So my amazing uh, beloved. Apple laptop that looks like a handbag and that was colorful and I could accessorize it to my clothes. Yeah. It was a fashion accessory, but it was super powerful. If it had just been pretty, but I hadn't worked, it then, would have been, you know, it would have been pointless. You, you could have, you could have bought it the first time, but definitely not the second time. Right? So, no. um, and, and, that, yeah. and then that's, that's kind of, so repeatability more often than not doesn't come if, if, if it's not functional or are usable and then the and then the third thing that we I think um, you know also looked at was, was a couple of examples in in terms of um, ROI on on good design where we look through Airbnb and we look through a couple of other examples as well and so so this this has been this has been super helpful for us and I, I'd love to um, have a longer conversation with you once I mean uh, you know some other time as well I, we've we've got Khalid uh, next who's who's going to talk about. Uh, who's, who's going to be joining Sahil and who's going to be talking about customer retention and uh, best practices, cross-selling and upselling. Um, and one of the key Very things- Very interesting. We, yeah. So so, so uh, another thing that I that I learned was that, was that more than 80% of a businesses that agencies do uh, that comes from referrals of existing clients, right? So, so the largest source of new clients for agencies is existing clients. And so, so how do you give a good experience to them and what are the retention practices? That's what he's going to be uh, talking about. And just as a Fantastic. quick, 
just as a quick reminder we've got cloudways as as the company that is that is um, you know partnering with us for this for the summit as well as for this conversation they offer managed cloud um, hosting um, and you can head over to summit.clientjoy.io um, find Picha as a speaker, connect to her on LinkedIn, and then book a slot for a free um, a branding session or a conversation. Right. Um, so, thank you, Picha, for joining us. And I. My pleasure. 